Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years. Hi, and welcome to Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community. I'm Mary Kate Carpetris, and with me today is Karen Charles, and Karen is an event specialist for Husqvarna Viking. Welcome, Karen. Hi. It's great to nice have to you here, here today. Tell us a little bit about what it means to be an event specialist for Husqvarna Viking. Well, this is my dream job. I awesome. just started in January, and I travel and do education events across the country, and I get to meet with wonderful people who are interested in all forms of sewing, but my real passion is quilting, and that's where I, I just love to spend every moment I have uh, quilting. Are these presentations you do, are they just for quilters, or do you talk nope, about garment nope. sewing as well? We do heirloom sewing. Okay. We do a lot of machine sewing uh, classes, so people get to learn how to use the wonderful features on their machines. And um, sergers, we do a lot of classes with sergers and events uh, as a way of getting people to um, try new things mm -hmm. and find new uh, passions in their sewing. And you're doing these mostly at shops? In the shops, and we do things at special events and hotels and all kinds of at quilt shows. There's a lot of different um, events at the quilt shows that are planned too. Awesome. So let's um, let's go back though. Let's talk yeah. about your start in quilting. Um, do you come from a quilting family? No, nope, no. Nope. When I started sewing, I was the first one in my family that was really uh, sewing, and I started quilting when my kids were very young, and it was a way of kind of getting away and just blocking out the world as that when they were taking their naps, that's when I would quilt. I understand. <laughs> <laughs> and I started as a hand quilter and a hand uh -huh. piecer, and I quickly realized that wasn't really where I wanted to spend my time. I decided very early on that I didn't like doing the same block more than once, if I could avoid it. And uh, the more color, the better, the more fabrics, the better, uh, which was a real challenge, because when I started quilting, I was living in Montreal uh, about 40 years ago, and there was not a lot of fabric available. There was brown and brown, mm. and I like lime green and orange and purple and turquoise, and, those, and it, they just didn't exist. The selection exist. just wasn't there at the time. Uh, when I moved to the United States, it was a completely different world for me because they had um, such a much larger group of quilters, and the supplies in the stores were offering all kinds of um, colors and, and products that I've never seen before. And so it was really exciting for me, and I, I think... Uh, that really was where I started to expand and get into a lot of different types of quilting. Was What was quilting like in Canada 30, it, 40 years ago? How big was I it? I mean, it sounds ancient. I can't even believe I'm that old. <laughs> it seems like a lifetime ago. I um, when I moved to Vermont, I was 40. So I started quilting when I was in my 20s. Mm -hmm. um, so it was only 20 years before, not 40. Mm -hmm. uh, just, you know, so you don't think I'm like 95. <laughs> <laughs> um, but uh, uh, there was quilters, but it was really, uh, there were a lot of weavers in Quebec, and there was a lot of other um, types of things, but quilting was just becoming um, known. And so a lot of people were really didn't have the tools, they didn't have the rulers, rotary cutters weren't, didn't exist. And so most of the work we did was um, hand drawing mm -hmm. lines, cutting things out with scissors, and it was a completely different world. Mm -hmm. um, and as, you know, over that 20 year period where I was quilting in Quebec, uh, they started to have access to a lot of it, but they never really had the same access to books because a lot of it wasn't translated into Quebec, into French. Mm. And so they didn't have the same amount of literature. And there are a lot of people there who just speak French. There are don't... people that just speak French. And a lot of quilters, because they tend to travel and go to shows now, they've, you know, some of them have developed English skills just so that they can read the books and travel sure. to the quilt show. Uh, in Vermont, where I'm living right now, we have a huge, huge following of Quebecers that come down to the Vermont Quilt Festival every year. So it's of course it, fabric is exciting. less expensive in the United States. It is less than expensive, it is absolutely. But that's changing, you know. Yeah, things are evening out a little bit as the dollar, Canadian dollar's gotten more even, too. Okay. When I moved to Vermont, the Canadian dollars were 65 cents. Now mm. it's within 10 cents difference. So okay. that's kind of leveled off the playing field a little bit. Okay. So you were quilting at home. Yep. And then how did you get into um, the quilt industry? How did you start working at as a, in it as a professional? Well, I was working at a quilt shop when I moved to Vermont. And uh, then I saw that they were looking for a manager of a Husqvarna Viking shop. And as it happened... I'd been working with uh, Husqvarna Viking for the last 
you know, 20 years, mm -hmm. and I loved it. I mean, for me, it was the best machine that I'd ever had. I couldn't imagine a machine that would do what I wanted to do that would be any better than that. And so it just seemed like fate. Mm -hmm. um, so I applied for the job. I was given it almost immediately on a phone interview and started working there, and I'd been uh, managing that store for 14 years. Oh, okay. And it was just, it, it was my dream job at the time. And just recently, I've moved back to the uh, Swanton, Vermont, right up near the Canadian border, and uh, I couldn't do that anymore. And so it just was a made in heaven kind of opportunity that I was able to work for Who's Run a Viking and be an event specialist. So, okay. you know, there's not too many people that can say that they really, you know, work in a job that they absolutely love. Mm -hmm. And they, I couldn't see myself anywhere else. So I That's love it. wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Well, I know when I was first looking for a machine, almost 20 years ago, <laughs> um, the reputation was that Husqvarna Viking were the machines. They just had such a fantastic reputation, and mm -hmm. that's not to disparage any of the other no, machines out there. No, absolutely not. They're just but easy, the... and you can do anything mm -hmm. you want, which has given me the ability to kind of play around with all kinds of different techniques that I might not have been so adventuresome to do if I needed to, you know, work with things and adjust things. I'm, I'm really, it's easy to do the kinds of things, and I'm going to be doing some... Uh, tutorials for you, and I'm yes, going to be showing yes. a lot of these techniques coming Yes, up. yes, definitely tune back in, check our website, because we have a lot of episodes with Karen showing a variety of techniques. Let's go back, though, and talk about, um, you said you started out hand-piecing and hand-quilting yep. the way a lot of people mm -hmm. did, um, especially those who started maybe before, you know, 20 years or more yep. prior. Um, and what kind of quilts were you making? Very traditional? Very traditional. When I started, it, was, it was, you know, the, the typical... 12 blocks mm -hmm. and every one of them was different and it was just to learn the techniques and then I started getting involved in much more modern quilts uh, log cabins that didn't look like log cabins mm. and uh, you know just I, I, every opportunity I had to try a new block that's what I would do I just liked experimenting with um, all the different shapes and how you put them together and how you get them to be perfectly pieced and um, because I didn't like to do a lot of things more than once, I tended to move on to a lot of different uh, quilts and try different, you know, different and you designs. And like you like to do your own quilting? I do. It's never made sense to me. and I did it once where I put a whole quilt top together and then I sent it uh, for somebody who had a long arm for them to finish it. And I realized right away I couldn't do that because I felt like I was losing half the creativity. Mm. I love that ability to do a quilt from start to finish. And to me, so much of the um, beauty comes from finishing it, the quilting you choose, and how you're going to put it all together and, and make it all sing. And that's the most important thing to me, I think. The, the piecing the fabric is only a small part of it. So uh, as I've been working uh, more and more, um, and I started using embroidery. At first I thought I could never imagine why I would want to use an embroidery machine. And then as time has gone on, I can't even imagine not using it because it's become such a big important part of the quilting process that I'm doing. When you design a quilt top, do you take into consideration how you're going to quilt it, what kind of embroidery you might want to use, or is that something that comes I'm later? I'm not usually that more thoughtful. organic? Uh, yeah, I tend to be doing okay. it on a very organic. I will pull fabrics, and most of my quilts tend to use uh, many, many fabrics, because then I don't have to worry about having enough of any one fabric. That's so, true. That's a great <laughs> point. And, and that's what makes it sing, too, for yes, me. Just absolutely. Just the little look is, is, is yeah. um, that, that scrappiness, the more it just... Yeah. And it's a quilt. It's not just a comforter. Absolutely. And now I've started working a lot more with uh, putting applique that's done with the embroidery. Hmm. Um, and that kind of gives it a very unique, different look, too. But it's also very simple, very fast. And I can move forward and uh, complete something in a quarter of the time I could if I was hand appliqueing or... Sure. I mean, I've done it all, but my vision's not the same as it used to be either. So it's not quite the same to be hand, piece, hand uh, appliqueing a quilt. Um, so it doesn't mean I have to give it up. It just means that I'm doing it in a different way. Right, right. And it's not the same thing as hand quilting. Nobody's no. pretending it is. Right. But it's, uh, it's a whole new art form. Mm -hmm. Just like embroidered quilts, you know, 10 years ago would not have been recognized in a quilt show. Today, there's categories of, of embroidered quilts, and they offer a completely different vision of what quilting is. 
Well, let's talk about the quilt that you brought with you. This is a really gorgeous, gorgeous quilt, and I've been enjoying looking at it. So talk a little bit about the, the first of all, there's the top, how it was yeah. pieced. Um, you said that's not completely your original design? When, when this quilt, it was a smaller part of it. Uh, the original design was created by Marie Duncan, and um, it was a class that we were doing, and I promised everybody that as they were working on it, everybody's quilt would be more beautiful than mine, and they were. And they were all totally unique. None of them looked the same. Um, but they all started from that basic piecing of putting the center blocks together. Okay, and then you added the outer border. Right, and then okay. the outer border was done. And the designs were uh, some that came from uh, uh, Husqvarna Viking designer uh, Diamond. And um, so they were all You're designs were on the machine. The embroidery, the embroidery designs? The embroidery okay. designs, absolutely. Okay. And, and the quilting designs, too, for that matter. And what, what machine did you use to make this? The designer Diamond Royale. Okay. Deluxe. Okay. And uh, now, of course, there's a... Uh, the uh, Designer Diamond Royale, which is the newest one, and it still has all those designs that are on there. Um, but when I was putting it together, it started just as a central panel, and we were uh, laying the designs out and creating them and placing them just as a way of trying to get a larger design. Um, some people have embroidery machines that have four-inch hoop, and so it's really hard for them to do something on a larger scale. Now we have uh, larger and larger hoops, and, and it's easier to create very large embroidered design. So the center was done like that. Mm -hmm. um, then it, the rest of the top was put together and the embroidery on the outside border was uh, added in afterwards. And then put together like a traditional quilt. And I stitch in the ditch everything that is a straight line. I want it to look like a straight line. So I stitch in the ditch with uh, a walking foot or dual feed foot. And mm -hmm. then afterwards I added in the more elaborate quilting designs with the embroidery machine. Okay, okay. How much latitude do you have with the embroidery? Now, I, I don't do machine embroidery, yeah. so it's all... Um, well, I'm, maybe you're going to get interested. Maybe I will. <laughs> I mean, and, and I, I like learning about the techniques, yes. too. So how much latitude do you have in terms of um, how many colors are in each motif and, and choosing the thread colors? I mean, that gives you a lot of options. If it's a design that's already made, then you can choose to go with as many colors that are on there. Some quilt designs have got two or three or four. Most of them are one-color designs. Um, if you're creating your own, and now I'm creating a lot of my own designs, I can make them any way I want to be. So I am a total latitude to choose not only the design, but also that it's going to fit the area that I want it to fit mm -hmm. and how many colors are introduced to it. And as you said, this is, this is where your quilting journey has taken you Absolutely. in terms of really being it's able to play around. It's so much fun now. And, and it's easier than you would ever think. Well, we're, as, as you said, and as we said, we're going to be exploring those in other episodes. Yep. We really hope that you tune back in and check out all of the different lessons that Karen's going to be showing us with her machines and all of the different modules that are available. Thank you so much for being You're here. It's a pleasure to be here. Awesome. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you next time. Take care. Bye-bye. Quilters Newsletter TV, the Quilters Community, is brought to you by Handy Quilter, designed by a quilter for quilters, and Husqvarna Viking, keeping the world sewing for over 140 years.